Okay, like I promised in my last video, I was going to show you something unique about uh, pop can stoves. I plan on sharing all my research, uh, done pretty decent amount all winter to come up with this. Now, what makes my stoves unique are a couple features. This is a very basic model you have right in front of you. I call these the 8DBs, which stands for 8 Dual Burner. And what that means is I have four burners here on this crown that go straight up, and I have four burners inside the bowl that kind of come out in angle. And why I like this design over the traditional is the traditional one, you usually have holes here in the bottom to drain the fuel in. I've done away with that completely. Got rid of the penny, the whole nine yards. To me, that's an improvement because I eliminated one silly thing I got to carry around. So no penny. It's no longer a penny stove in that respect. The second thing that I managed to do was literally I had an aha moment where I said, you know, it'd be great if I had a way to insulate these so it would be easier to handle it while it was burning, like if I had to move it or something. Not the smartest thing to do when it's on fire, but still. And that's when I came up with this. A homemade cozy out of thermal felt. And when this thing's burning, you can lift this whole stove. It's no it's, this is no warmer than a cup of coffee. So that was my second improvement. And this has turned out to be really great. But I was still getting leakage as far as I was losing some heat downward. So my third improvement was to come up with just a real th simple thermal pad, also made of thermal felt. And this is no different than what other people were doing this is, but I haven't seen anybody make a cozy yet. And that made it even better in my opinion. And uh, it did shorten my boil times a little bit. So I said, you know what? I got to take this a step further. And that's when I designed my first stove with a remote feed. Let me set that aside here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And that would be this stove. Let me turn it here. You see this feed nipple? That was the game changer. Now this stove is identical to this stove right here, except this stove doesn't have a feed nipple. It's very basic. Um, I think the best burn time I was able to get out of that with a full ounce or two of fuel was, no, one ounce of fuel was, uh, geez, it was like 18 minutes or something like that, almost 20 minutes. With this, I can burn it as long as I want, as long as I have fuel running to it. And how I accomplished this was to make a setup much like a hospital IV that goes from a can and everything. So I'm going to pause the camera, I'm going to set it all up, and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here are the individual components of the remote feed. We have the dripper, the small fuel line, long fuel line, this piece of fuel line that goes inside the fuel bottle, uh, this piece of brass tubing, I call it the candy cane. We got our feed control, which is nothing but a modified clothespin. And my trusty Zippo lighter, so I can light everything. And that's all there is to it. We have our fuel bottle. We have going into the fuel bottle, I'll hold it up here so you can see it a little better. You see that line going down in from this little uh, piece of... Uh, brass that's bent. That's all hollow brass tubing and it comes down to my homemade little drip and the hose and everything hooks up to it 
and I just got a modified clothespin here with uh, a thumb screw and that allows me to crank it open and that controls the drip rate which goes to the stove. Now <clears throat> the only thing this does work better if it's at a higher level than the stove. Um, simple gravity at work. So I've got a little can over here. I'm just going to set this on to where it's at a higher level. And we're going to fire this up just, show, just so I can show you how it works. Now you do have to use still priming fluid in here to get it started. But when you want to put fuel in, this is the cool part. I'm going to adjust the camera here and zoom in. Okay. Watch in here and watch this. This is locked, the, uh, the control is locked all the way down. So when I squeeze this, did you see the bubbles inside? And I let go. Look at that squirt some fuel in there. So it's primed right now. Now when I crank this open, keep watching the dripper, and there it is, it's dripping. Just like a little hospital IV. Okay, so I'm gonna move that over, get it away from the stove. And this is marked in ounce measurements, that's one ounce, that's two ounces, three ounces, four ounces, five ounces. And right now it's at three and a half ounces. We're going to put about a quarter ounce of fuel in here before we, we uh, prime it and start the stove. So and it's almost there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the priming fluid on. And this stove is designed where you can only put so much priming fluid in it before it starts draining in the holes. And we put it in the inner and outer ring. That's plenty of fluid. And I'm going to slow this drip right down. And we're going to light this. All right. And I'm going to turn off the lights so we can see the, uh, see the bloom a lot easier. And it's still dripping. I know it's hard to see in the video. I can, you know, it's, it's dark. And I'm using uh, two different fuels here. I'm using uh, this Performance Octane Booster I got at the dollar store as the uh, primary fuel. And then to prime it, I'm using uh, Clean Strip Denatured Alcohol. I know it's kind of silly, but I found it works really well for me. You could run it on just one fuel. It's a matter of preference, I suppose. But... Uh, We've got a quarter ounce of fuel in there. The uh, dripper is still dripping real slow. In fact, let me count it. One, one thousand, two, one. About one drip every two seconds. And like I said, this is just to familiarize you what I've done. And there is a cozy that goes on this stove and everything else just like the other one. I just don't have it on here so you can see everything. I'll move that fuel yes over a bit and it's still dripping about once every two seconds and you can get this to where it's just you know really putting out the fuel now because we don't have the cozy on here we're losing some of the heat right to this metal tabletop so I might have to prime it a second time now we got a little little flames there. But like I said, this was just to show you. I'm gonna shut off the fuel now. We're just gonna let it burn out what it has in it. Just to show you the basic setup. So there is the eight pilot flames. Now traditionally with a penny stove you have six holes. But let me tell you what I've learned here just by experimentation and playing around. There are so many variables in these stoves that affect performance, it's staggering when you get into it. There's the basic design of the stove, you know, 
are you using the big cans or are you losing smaller cans? Um, I've also found that not all cans are created equal. I've pretty much settled on these uh, sweet tea cans from Arizona simply because they're cheap, they're plentiful, they've worked really well for me. Now you can get the bigger cans, they work really well too, but I like this size because it will fit around a GI canteen cup stove, which I will show you in another video. Um, but this is just to show you, you know, the flames and all that good stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put up my videos I took of my tests with thermal paper to show the exact amount of heat leakage and everything. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. I was surprised, like I said, at how much heat leaks out of these stoves. And the more heat we can put up on your pot, the better. I'm going to turn the light back on. And you can, you can still see the flames in this light.